All students of history need to know the difference between historical and historiographical essays or books. Historical questions drive the historical essay. What happened? How did it happen? Who did it? Why did it happen? Why did they do it? It's the who, what, when, where, why, and how that is the root of the historical essay or book. Historiographical questions drive the historiographical essay or book and should always begin with the question, how have historians interpreted? Then you just simply fill in the, the ellipses up there with your topic. Now, historiographies are not trying to solve a problem or unanswered questions. They are trying to uncover the patterns of interpretation and to evaluate the plausibility of the variety of interpretations. Why do historians need to know the patterns? We're trying to determine gaps in our knowledge. We're trying to determine points of views of authors to see how that may have contributed to the historical debate and the dialogue about the topic. We're trying to determine what research still needs to be done because we are expected to reach some level of originality even at the undergraduate level. Now, the most likely patterns that you may encounter include what I might call a stand on my shoulders approach. Historians largely build upon the findings of others. Originality tends to come from the sources being exploited or because of the historian's perspective. New, fa new facts may not appear that startling in a stand on my shoulders approach which students will struggle with if they're trying to look for differences and evaluate plausibility. There's also a whole spectrum of traditionalist and revisionist historians. Then sometimes generations later neo-traditional or neo-revisionist or post-traditional. Traditional is the first set of interpretation, so whatever that first set is becomes, quote, traditional. The revisionist is relative to the traditional. It's oftentimes in response to the neo-traditionalist and neo-revisionist often take the best parts of, of both sides. Uh, they oftentimes appear more balanced, placing events into context. We'll sometimes call them post-traditionalist or post-revisionist. Related to traditional versus revisionist, there are the competing schools of interpretation. And what we find is, is that sometimes historians divide into some pretty recognizable categories and their differences in interpretation are essentially shaped by fundamental assumptions about human nature or human behavior that, that separate them out into different schools. Um, they might make assumptions about how governments develop or implement policies. Now what factors shape the patterns of interpretation? Of course each historian brings his or her um, experiences into their interpretation. We can't divorce ourselves from our personal beliefs and values. So we, our, the differences are in part shaped by the impact of political, social, economic, intellectual developments. The impact of new interpretations can help historians reformulate their interpretations. Perhaps the discovery of new evidence or a new method of research influences how historians interpret the past so that a new generation or a new group of historians might adopt a quantitative approach or a psychological approach. Now how do you manage to keep track of the facts and the potential variety of interpretations? It can be overwhelming and can actually be difficult initially to recognize differences because you're caught up in trying to learn the history, the facts. I would say be organized, be vigilant, and be aware that through effective reading and note-taking skills, you can learn to manage the variety of interpretations and make sense of them all.